Hello, U10. This is the fifth and final topic of U10 Physics for Double Science. You can see here, as I'm ticking them off, all the topics you've done so far. And waves, or features of waves, is this final topic. So, this is the front of your booklet. Please make sure you fill in your name, form, set, and teacher. As usual, page one is what you would see in the inside front cover of your examination paper. It's, it's two parts to it. You have the equations on the left and the SI multipliers on the right hand side, both for higher and foundation. Page two is for the closer gap feedback from your teachers. And we're going to start today on page three. So if you could please at the top of page three, <coughs> write down lesson one, <coughs> excuse me, and the date and the, the title is already underlined for you. Features of waves. And waves is really what we're going to be learning about. And you can see there, look on this, this photo, surfer. Looks very familiar, surfer, actually. In the middle of, of a wave, I think surfers call them tubes. So it says underneath, this surfer has caught a wave. Draw a picture of what you think a wave or series of waves looks like. So let's get straight down to business. In that box there, I'd like you to draw what you think waves would look like. So pause the video, do it now. When you've done, press play. Now I think most people, when asked to do this, they will draw something similar to this. Because I think that's how most people would visualize waves. Now, if we were in, in classroom, I'd ask, did everyone draw a similar type of wave? Most people would have drawn that transverse wave. I'm coming back to that, that in a moment. This is the spec. I'll slowly go down it so you can, if you want to pause it at any point, you can. The spec, remember, is everything that you need to know or, or learn. And lesson one then, it is these A, B, and C parts. And I'll just underline them. The difference between transverse and longitudinal waves, the description of a wave in terms of, these are new words for today, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and wave speed, and those Things you see in brackets, that's lambda, that's a Greek letter, V and F, are symbols for those quantities. We look at how we can represent waves, a graphical representation of transverse waves, including the labeling of wavelength and amplitude. Those are the three that we're going to be learning about today. So lesson one is from pages three through to nine. If you can now turn on to page four. There's a chunk of text i like you to read through yourself. So pause the video now and read through, press play. play when you've completed reading that paragraph. So that's a bit of information about uh, how waves are used for surfing. Again, there's a few words we're going to be learning about in a moment. Amplitude, frequency, and wavelength. I'm just highlighting those as I'm speaking to you. But just to give you an idea of 
what where this paragraph is talking about you know obviously surfing happens at sea I should say on the shoreline and we live just off the M4 around about here as Ponte de Lais and of course there are surfing beaches dotted around Gawa near to us and we do find that the best surfing beaches are down here Llangeneth because of the way in which the the waves come on the shore and Newquay is down near Cornwall and this is the course look of of Cornwall and new keys here so you can see that they they'll also get those those waves coming in from the southwesterly direction which is often the, the prevailing wind in um, UK what I'd like to do now is give you an explanation of amplitude frequency and wavelength by just looking at a wave okay this is a piece of software you can find on the internet uh, FET Colorado if you're interested PHET dot Colorado just google that in and, and you can play around with this it allows you just to pause for example so I just paused it there and play and this little green button allows you to turn the that dripping of the tap on and off so you can see waves are created by some sort of vibration or oscillation and in this case it's water dripping down onto the su surface of of a pond or a, or a lake whatever it is and that's what creates the, these waves now the frequency and amplitude if you look up the top right hand side i can change the frequency i'm going to take the frequency down to minimum look what happens i'm actually going to pause to let just let the, the water settle so i've paused no more drips and you can see now the water will settle frequency are the number of waves produced per second so if you've got a low frequency you've got a low number of waves produced every second just like this and what i'm going to do now i'm going to switch the tap off at the water settle and i want you to compare how that looks to when i increase the frequency up to a maximum watch okay, so we've got high frequency a high number of waves per second We measure frequency in units called Hertz, and we look more at that in a moment. Okay, I've changed the frequency now to somewhere near the middle, and this time I'm going to change the amplitude. If you look at the top right, I'm just going to take the amplitude down to something quite, quite small. Put the tap on. And you can see the drips are quite small and the waves the height of the waves are really small compare that to just stop the drips for a second when i put maximum amplitude in watch now big drip lots of energy being introduced into the system and the waves are much higher now what we can do we the way to measure the amplitude of a wave 
is to use um, something like a ruler where we measure in distance. I'm going to pause a wave a second. I'm just pausing a wave there. Now, the amplitude of the wave can be measured if we take two points. So if we take those two points and I measure in between the two crosses, 0.3 centimeters. Now you can see here that the amplitude is decreasing as the waves go along. When we're learning about waves, the amplitude will be remaining the same. So that's how we measure amplitude. It's the distance from midpoint to peak. Oh, I've just used a new word there. The peak is the top of the wave, and the trough is the bottom of the wave. So they should be the same. You can see they're the same there. Okay. Another word for the peak is a crest of the wave. Now, the third word that I said we're going to talk about is something called a wavelength and the wavelength is the distance between the peak of one wave and the peak of another so you can see there's 2.6 centimeters and we should find that that 2.6 centimeters is the is the same at any point of those waves okay, so we've learned frequency amplitude and our wavelength. And if we look at a different type of wave, a sound wave, and we'll look more on that in a moment, then we can see, we'll see the same thing. You've got, in this case, it's not a drip producing the waves in the air, it's the cone vibrating back and forth. And again, what we can do if I pause that, the way in which we measure wavelength is if we go from the middle of one wave to the middle of the other the wavelength there look is 142.9 centimeters so the amplitude frequency wavelength but before we do more on that let's just summarize what we learned so far waves transfer something from one place to another i did use this word a few moments ago and the words energy and that's important to remember. Waves transfer energy from one place to another. When you were looking at the screen, it was going from left to right. That was a transfer of energy. Waves are a series of vibrations or oscillations. I mean, they go back and forth. Water waves make water molecules vibrate. Rate. That's a bit of a tough one for you to answer. We'll go back and look at, at the software we were just using. The, the, more, the water molecules are vibrating up and down, whereas the wave direction is going from left to right as you're looking at it. So the water molecules are vibrating 90 degrees or perpendicular to the wave direction don't worry if you don't get that straight away so the water molecule sorry water wave make water molecules vibrate perpendicular remember that means right angles perpendicular to the wave direction now, again, what I mean by that is, if here are your water waves moving from left to right, the actual particles themselves are vibrating up and down that way. In our atmosphere, sound waves make air particles vibrate from side to side or something that we will be learning about if we look at sound waves again and we look at it in terms of particles each one of those little circles 
white or red, if you look at them, they are vibrating away from the loudspeaker, the cone. When we say they're vibrating pa parallel to the direction of, of the wave. So, to understand that a little better, we're going to consider two types of waves that you need to understand. Number one, longitudinal waves, and number two, transverse waves. So the first one, longitudinal waves. So these are like our sound waves we were just looking at. And, in so, and what, what we find is that we get areas of compressions and rarefactions. Let's look back at this again. If I were to pause that, what you'll notice is there's, there's areas where the particles are very close together or compressed together. That's what they call compressions. And areas where they, there's almost an absence of particles called rarefactions. If I move this little tape measure, right, as almost use it as a cursor. So the tape measure at the moment, what I'm moving it about, would be in the middle of a compression. Rarefaction here in between a compression in between two adjacent compressions, compression again, rarefaction. We're going to look at a slinky spring and see the same thing. So what we get as areas of compression, I'll highlight here in yellow. There's another one there. There's another one there. And in between, and I'll highlight them in a different color, I'll just use green. And in between the compressions, you can see where the slinky springs, or the adjacent slinky springs, are spread out, called rarefactions. We look at a quick video now to see how that works in reality. Okay. Now, when you look at this, you can see what's happening is that, I'm just going to pause that a second, is that the hand <coughs> on the left of the screen, I'll just draw a little arrow here, is moving to the left and to the right. And what you can see is a compression moving from left to right and there's a little string attached to the spring on, on the right hand side of the screen that's moving left to right it's not up and down it's moving in the same direction as the hand left to right watch again right So watch again now, as you can see that compression moving down. Watch how the wave travels and also how the hand is moving. We say the wave direction is the same as the vibration direction. Now what we say is, in a longitudinal wave, and I'll make some notes on the right hand side, the particles vibrate parallel to the wave direction. So the wave direction is from left to right. Look at the video. You can see that bit of blue string that's been put on the, the spring itself. Left to right. And the question they're asking there how does the ribbon move left to right? What can you conclude from this? Well, the particles are moving from left to right. And we say in a longitudinal wave, 
longitudinal wave particles travel parallel to the wave direction. So that's the first type of wave. What you need to do now, uh, make your own notes on longitudinal wave. I'll, I'll verbally read out what should be included. So, and I'll write down some keywords as well, but you put it, you write it down in your own words to make sense of it. Right, so you'd say longitudinal waves are created when the vibration of the waves vibrate perpendicular to the wave direction. Compressions and rarefactions are created in the wave. Let's now look at the second type of wave, transverse waves. And I'm going to make a few notes on, on the right of the video as we watch it. This time, what we're going to see is that the particles vibrate up and down. So that's the movement <coughs> of particles. And the wave direction is left to right. So can you see if the movement is that way and the wave direction is that way then we say they are perpendicular to each other. Compare to the longitudinal waves. Longitudinal wave particles travel parallel to the wave direction. These are the two key words then, parallel for longitudinal and perpendicular for transverse. Uh, okay, that's a bit better. Uh, Yes, mm, that's better. Mm. It's not a standing wave. Yeah, it's not a standing wave. It's almost a standing wave, maybe. Yeah. Not quite a standing wave, but it's still moving. How does the hand move? Up and down. How does the wave move? Left to right. Okay, quite clear lah. Okay. Actually, this is good. You know why? Because the 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 ribbon seems to come back to its original position. Mm. The direction is from the hand to us. So again, perpendicular. Look at the yellow spot. I like, I like this slow mo. You can see the wave moving along. And look at the yellow spot. It's starting to move now to the left. The yellow spot moved to the, the left, then it moved to the right. Whereas the wave direction was perpendicular to it. So in summary, if we look at the two types of waves, the first type we looked at, there's a transverse wave, vibrations 90 degrees to the direction of travel. The longitudinal wave has vibrations parallel to the direction of travel. So transverse at the top. 
keywords again, transverse wave, vibrations, 90 degrees. Remember, you can use perpendicular. Instead of 90 degrees. And for longitudinal waves, the vibrations are parallel to the direction of travel. You need to learn and remember that. So what I'd like you to do now is complete this section here for transverse waves, saying something similar to what we just looked at in transverse waves. The particles vibrate at 90 degrees to the direction of wave motion. So you write that in here. What I'd like you to do then is just add underneath an example of both a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. So at the bottom, example for a longitudinal wave, sound waves, and for transverse waves, light waves, water waves. I suppose what we could add to both, we just looked at them, slinky springs. So let's pluralize that to examples and add in slinky springs. Right, turn over now, please, to page six. This is what page six should look like. And your task here is to complete this Venn diagram. Remember, the way Venn diagrams work is that everything just in this section in green here would be applicable to longitudinal waves only. Everything over here would be applicable to transverse waves only and everything in the middle would be applicable to both. Okay, so pause the video now and press play when you've added in as much as you can. I'll give you a, a quick starter then. Uh, so longitudinal waves, they have compressions. And transverse waves have peaks. Yeah. You can carry on now and press play when you're done. Okay. Um, you can add parts from the completed Venn diagram here to yours if you so wish. There's nothing new there to what we've already covered. So I'm not going to talk through that. That's just a quick recap on what you should have learned so far. And you can pause that and add to your notes as you wish. So if you move on now, please, to page seven, and we're going to learn more about these four key terms, wavelength, amplitude, frequency, and wave speed. We've covered the first three already. We haven't covered the fourth wave speed. It says in the next diagram, we shall focus on the first two of these. That's wavelength and, and amplitude. What do you need to do? Is It says vary the shape of one wavelength using a highlighter or different colored pencil. What I'd like you to do is label the top wave diagram. Then I'm going to ask you to draw out your own wave on the bottom diagram. So the first diagram here, there are four arrows, two um, going horizontally and two vertically. Let's highlight those first. So the, the two then that are shown horizontally show the wavelength. So let's label that wavelength and the symbol we use is a Greek letter, lambda, 
and in this case we can measure and I want you to measure with the ruler the the size of this wave length now my ruler is going to be different than yours but you might be able to work out and I'll put some little marks where I just bring it down slightly okay so I'm going to be using this point here a zero that's one centimeter two centimeters three centimeters four centimeters 4.1234564.6 centimeters in your booklets you'll have a different reading but what you'll notice is if you do the same down here and we make the same measurements it should also be 4.6 let's just let's just do that so here's zero let's just make sure we've got this in the right place there we go there's zero then we've got one two three four point one two three four five six okay so we can label this wavelength lambda equals 4.6 centimeters now in fact you could do that at any two similar points on the wave so you could take from this point here to that point there and again that would read 4.6 or if you could go from the bottom to the bottom of the next wave that would also 4.6 so the wavelength is the distance from adjacent peaks or adjacent we call these midpoints the two vertical arrows here measure the amplitude so the amplitude is the distance from the midpoint to the peak of a wave or midpoint to the trough of a wave and again they should be the same let's get the ruler and okay that's zero that's one just there that's two two point one two point one centimeters and we could do the same down here there's one there's two there's three there's four there's five six there's seven what I'd like you to do now is in the second diagram draw a wave with a wavelength of and I'll write them on the I'll write it over here on the right hand side with a, a wavelength of 2.3 centimeters so that's half the wavelength and we'll go amplitude we'll keep the amplitude the same 2.1 centimeters well I'm going to help you do just that we're going to start at the same point so we'll put across there but if you look at one wave and I'll highlight that for you now at the top and so I'm, I'm highlighting in green here what one whole wave looks like that's a quote I've done a quarter of a wave there so far I highlight a quarter of a wave now I'm down to half three quarters one so <clears throat> what I need to show is that I'll be completing 
the midpoint here because we've got half the wavelength is now going to be here that's 2.3 centimeters and in between we'll have another point there where it crosses that that rest position and then we're going to have a peak there and a peak there well that that would continue across the graph so the amplitude is the same and the wavelength is half so what we do what we can show now is that the wavelength here is 2.3 centimeters you can just about make that out if i bring that down slightly there's zero there's one centimeter there's two centimeters and that's 2.3 centimeters if i just continue now using my green pen this is i think this is the easiest way to draw waves if we just put crosses at the midpoints or the peaks and the troughs and it just makes things a lot easier and just join them up try try and make sure that you do use that characteristic curved shape when you draw on your waves so what is the wavelength in millimeters we're going to look we're talking here now about the top wave well we worked it out to be the wavelength is 4.6 centimeters so that's 46 46 millimeters how many waves are in one diagram if we look at this here well i've highlighted one whole wave but it's one wave and another quarter wave So it's one and a quarter waves, or 1.25 waves, one and a quarter waves. Let's just check that. Yep. Oh, I do apologize. I have made a mistake. Let's go back. Let's look at this again. Didn't feel right. Okay. One wave, let's, let's use a highlighter. That's a quarter of a wave. That's half a wave. That's three quarters down to here. And that's one whole wave. Up to here, I'll be, let me explain that. If you, if you look, at this spot here and this spot here they're identical it's the start of a new wave so that's quarter of a wave and that's one and a half waves i could do that in a different color just to make it stand out i'll do the next the second wave in purple so that purple now this is the second wave one and a quarter one and a half one and a half waves moving on now then to page eight This is a quick activity for you to do. I'm going to write four words on the right hand side and then you've got to put them in the correct places here. And these are, are the different the four words or phrases that you've got to use. Wave speed's one of them, 
frequency is another amplitude and wavelength. Wavelength, amplitude, frequency. You've got to write them in on the left hand side. And so I'm gonna you pause the video now, you write them in, and then I'll go through the correct answers with you in a moment. Okay, should should look like that. Take them if you're right, correct them if, if they're, they're wrong. Then, <clears throat> underneath, on page, starting on page 8, moving on to page 9, there are six questions for you to do. Again, this is going to be a self-assessment task. Pause the video now, answer these in your booklets and we'll go through them together when you press play again. Okay, the first question then, label up the wavelength on this wave trace diagram. Using a ruler, <clears throat> you could have labeled from peak to peak or trough to trough. So if I were to go peak to peak, I could do that. Or I could do trough to trough down here. It, it doesn't matter. Now, obviously, the the values that I'm going to be using be different to the ones in, in your box. So wavelength, I'm going to use a symbol lambda equals one point two, one point one, one point two, one point three, one point four, one point five, one point six centimeters. So label up the wavelength on this wave trace diagram. Yeah, done. The wavelength was one point six centimeters or sixteen millimeters. Label up the amplitude on the wave trace diagram. So the amplitude. Again, you can choose any one of these points here. I'm going to choose this one. And it's from peak to midpoint. And I'm going to use a symbol A equals I'm just changing that back because the scale will be changed equal so i'm just using again you will be different in your booklet one centimeter two point one two three four five six two point six centimeters okay so if it's two point six centimeters for the amplitude that's 26 millimeters. How many waves are present in this wave trace? Remember, this is the one I got wrong last time, so we're going to take a time with this and do it together. I'm just going to use a highlighter, a little thicker. Okay, so this that's a quarter. That's a half, three quarters, one. That's one. Two, three, three and a half. Now you could, you don't, I'm going to highlight it as I just done there. You could do it another way. If you spot that that's the start of one, that's the start of the next one, so that's one wave. Oh, again, I've made a mistake. Look. One, two, three, three and a half. Three and a half waves. Okay. 
what type of wave does this trace show and give an example so it's a transverse wave an example would be a water wave you could also write down a light wave or a slinky spring or string even give yourself then a mark out of nine Use descriptive words to compare the keywords for both waves. You know, and I've added now unmeasured wavelength and amplitude for both waves. We're going to work on the basis that each one of these squares is one centimeter. One centimeter in both directions. couple of other things oh, there's a slight typo slight typo there that's lambda lambda should be shown like that it's just been reversed that's all so you can correct that before we do this though I'm going to introduce pitch and volume I'm going to just show you what what that means Wavelength there is around about 147.3 centimeters. If I take the frequency back up, you can see the wavelength is down to about 78. So high pitch means high frequency notice I hadn't changed the amplitude at all so I'm going to leave that that sound put that sound back on now In fact, now zero amplitude, the particles in the air are just vi vibrating very, very slightly, but there's no pattern. Okay, I'm going to start there for you for the wavelength so you can see that um, <coughs> the wave D has got a wavelength of four centimeters. That'll be the same in your booklet because we're just working off that, that reference grid. So it's got a longer wavelength than wa wave K. I'd like you to do as much as you can now for amplitude, frequency, pitch and volume. So you need to compare the two. Okay, I've just completed that. For amplitude, the amplitude here look, was two centimeters or one centimeter. So we say that wave D is a larger amplitude than K. The frequency, well, 
because there's more waves in K, we say there's it's got a higher frequency than D, and it's also got, therefore got a higher pitch. Just think of the quick simulation we looked at. And the volume is linked to amplitude. So the larger the volume, so the larger the amplitude, the higher the volume. Okay, well that's it for this first lesson. Make sure you complete the plenary assessment and see you next time. Bye for now.